everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I decided that I would do a reading vlog and I'd bring you guys along and I'm going to be reading It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. This was a book I bought back in October or like when it dropped and I had been really anticipating reading it but I've been putting it off and I was like, you know what, might as well finish off the year reading it. So into this in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys along the process of me um, reading it, reacting to it and sharing my opinion. So if you don't want to be spoiled, this definitely is not the video that you should watch. But I also posted a video about me reviewing books a couple weeks ago. You guys seem to really like that video and you enjoyed it so I hope you enjoyed this one as well and also before we get started I want to say thank you for all the support that you guys have been giving my channel in just um, not only the month of December but this entire year thank you so much for watching my videos thank you very much for interacting with my content and I really hope that 2022 treated you well I am so excited to see you guys in 2023 so enjoy this video and yeah yeah it's currently 4 35 it's December 30th Friday December 30th so it's the day before New Year's Eve so New Year's Eve Eve and I wanted to start off with reading it starts with us so we're gonna start and yeah even though it's been almost two hours since I ran into Atlas. Currently on page 12 right now and this is a part where Lily is writing to Ellen for the first time in like a couple years and the line that really stuck out to me was she's talking about her divorce with Ryle and it pretty much goes it's difficult because I still have to interact with Ryle he still possesses all the good qualities I fell in love with and now that I'm no longer in a relationship with him it's rare I see the negative side and I'm, it's rare that I see the negative side that ultimately ended the marriage oh that must be tough that's like really that's really that's difficult like on an emotional level and like a mental level so again i'm interested to see how she's gonna navigate that throughout the book but yeah so we are currently on page 25 right now and this is the part where ryle and lily like this is the first interaction that we're seeing the two of them have um you know since the beginning of the novel and the divorce and i find it quite interesting because this is the part where lily was um telling ryle pretty much how like she wants to keep back to her apartment and she doesn't feel comfortable with ryle having easy access to just enter and leave her apartment as um he pleases and then he tries to turn this into a whole big argument so he's like oh so you don't want me to put my daughter to bed or you want me to see like emerson less and then she's like no 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 that's not the case like i just want my privacy as she said before and then after he's like well you know what like if i have to give the key back that means emmy gets to stay overnight at my place and then she's like no that i'm like i'm not comfortable for that and the fact that he really wants to have his way and he's being so inconsiderate about the way that lily feels is really bothering me and it makes me really upset and angry just because like she's mentioned this multiple times in the novel lily could have easily taken morale to court and this man could have easily been put to jail and he could have easily lost custody and um would have never had access and the ability to see emmy and his entire life would have changed but the fact that he feels so entitled to have his way all the time oh he's so annoying like i hate this so much so that's kind of where i am right now and it's currently 5.36, so we're gonna keep reading, so yeah. Um, another update, we're currently on page 37, and this is the part where, Ra no, Lily and Atlas, we finally see them like f interact again um, since, you know, the beginning of the novel. And um, this is when Atlas is over at Lily's place, I believe. They're either at Allison or Lily's place, and um, what's called again ryle is pulling up and he's coming and atlas is at the house as well because he dropped off some pasta for lily and ryle's about to enter the house and um lily is like you know like we have to hide atlas like ryle can't see that atlas is here or obviously it's going to cause a problem and i think the part that makes me that's just really unsettling and sad to see is the way that lily is in constant panic and she's always in survival mode when she's around ryle and i find like it's it's really sad and it's really upsetting because it's almost as though she can't live her life without being we she can't live her life without being fearful of how ryle is going to react it's just really disheartening and i feel like it's just emotionally exhausting and it just it's an extra mental load that she has to carry so i think it's just going to get to the point a point in the novel where she's just gonna have to put her foot down and she's like i need to be able to live my life the way that i want to live it and if it upsets ryle that is beyond him because at the end of the day lily's not necessarily doing anything that is really jeopardizing 
Ryle's safety or his happiness. Because at the end of the day, she sacrificed a lot and she's put a lot on the line to ensure that Ryle can still interact with his daughter and form a healthy relationship with her. And the fact that Ryle hasn't even been giving Lily the grace that she needs or giving Lily the space to be happy and to live her own life and to be her own individual, once again, is very selfish. So uh, what I'm predicting is obviously, I feel like Lily and Atlas are gonna end up together anyways at the end of the novel, but I feel like it's just gonna get to a point where she's gonna put her foot down and she's like, I wanna be happy. And she's going to choose her happiness over trying to constantly accommodate to Ryle's like, every beckoning need you know what i'm saying currently on page 40 and this is when atlas and lily are currently in the closet because lily hid atlas in there when ryle arrived because obviously she didn't want the two of them to interact now they're having like a personal one-to-one -one conversation and atlas is like oh lily like can i call you later today or not just tonight but like he wants to be able to like, consistently call her and talk to her right basically what she says is my life is complicated I don't intend for it to come out like a warning, but it does. I want to help you uncomplicate it. Ah! Atlas! Oh my gosh, okay. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to the reading. It's currently 6.07 right now, um, so yeah. So we're currently on chapter 12, page 104, and it's currently 8.03 p.m. And I also have some snacks here. I just have some hot Cheetos. So we're gonna continue reading and see where this is all going. But I feel like we've made some pretty good damage, okay? So, yeah. You named your daughter after Dory? What? Oh, uh, sir, what is this? I think he's just finding things to complain about just cause. Ah, uh, why do you like this rhino? This is so annoying. <laughs> you named you named our daughter. You named our daughter Dory. What? Mm, okay. Like, this is getting out of pocket now. Like, and for what? Little midway recap. We're still sitting in the same position. It's still very comfortable. We're on page one hundred eight, chapter thirteen, and oh my gosh, I just came to this one line in this chapter and i'm honestly dumbfounded i'm just sitting here with my jaw to the floor and i'm just like ryle oh the more and more i read about ryle the more and more <laughs> i just dislike him just because he is so annoying in this novel so pretty much um at this point this is when lily and ryle are on the roof okay so pretty much um lily went on her date with atlas and then she comes back to allison's house because allison is babysitting emmy and then after they're watching dory so that after when she arrives ryle's like um Lily, I want to speak with you privately. So then they go up to the rooftop and they start talking and they start questioning and interrogating Lily on why she named um, their daughter. Um, like why they, why Lily gave their daughter Dory as her middle name because her name is like um, Emerson Dory Kinkid, I believe. Kinsid? Kinkid? Um, and he's pretty much like interrogating her and questioning her and be like, well, why did you name her Dory? Like, did you name her Dory just because you like, you still have feelings for Atlas? Because even before she met Atlas, as she explained in the novel, um, she just really liked the movie Finding Dory because she named her daughter after that because the movie, or it was Finding Nemo. She named her daughter after Dory just because Dory was a very like courageous character and she wants her daughter to exhibit, you know, those courageous aspects um, in her life as she begins to grow up. And then the next thing that Ryle says catches me off guard and he says, um, on page 108, it upsets me to find out that our daughter's middle name might have been something you could you chose to deliberately hurt me. You can't expect something like that to not affect me. So pretty much he's blaming and accusing Lily and saying, you gave our daughter the name Dory because you wanted to hurt me personally. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, this has nothing to do with you. And trust me, if Lily wanted to hurt you, you would be behind bars right now. Like if she wanted to end your career and change the trajectory of your life, I'm telling you, she would have taken you to court. And I'm pretty sure she would have won if she got enough support and she got a really good lawyer. And the fact that you're not behind bars, she didn't press charges, she still gives you visitation hours with your daughter, and somehow that still is not enough for you, and even in this situation when she has clearly explained to you that she didn't name her, Do her she didn't name Emerson Dory because she still has feelings for Atlas, she simply just named um, Emerson Dory just because, you know, it was a movie that she has a personal connection with that has nothing to do with Atlas and you still don't believe her, <sighs> I just... It leaves me speechless because I feel like in Ryle's case, you have to lack a level of self-awareness 
and lack a level of, of emotional intelligence to be behaving in this way and in this manner and it's just absolutely not acceptable and once again the more and more Raul is brought up in this novel the more and more I'm beginning to come to the conclusion and realize he's not gonna change. We're literally like two pages <laughs> over because we're on page 110 and I'm reading this and one thing that kind of like crossed my mind and I find really interesting about this is obviously I understand that it ends with us and it starts with us like the whole Lily and like Ryle situation I understand it's not like a perfect de depiction of what domestic violence is like or what an abusive relationship is like but I definitely feel like it gives us a slight insight of what it could be um or what it could be like to be in that position and um not gonna lie it's so difficult I feel like even reading it from my perspective as a reader obviously when you see or when you're observing an abusive relationship from a third person perspective it's so easy for you to sit here and to point out and be like yeah obviously like Ryla's gaslighting her or obviously like Ryla's being very abusive or he's being emotionally manipulative in this situation but when you read it from Lily's perspective as Lily is experiencing or is in that abusive situation I understand why it's hard for her to leave again not saying that if you are in that type of situation you should stay but it's like I can understand why it's hard to leave because it's so hard to differentiate and kind of distinguish what's going on because you are constantly in a position where you're always mm, blaming yourself for everything that's happening because Lily will set a boundary and Ryle will clearly disregard that boundary and even though she knows subconsciously that what Ryle is doing is wrong, she'll still somehow find a way to blame it on herself and be like, am I being too hard on him? Am I not being lenient enough? Am I not being considerate? Again, like from a third person perspective, you can easily read that and be like, no, Lily, you're being reasonable. Like you set a boundary and obviously he didn't stick to it. But in her perspective, I can also understand and see how she sees it as her being um, too strict or her not being like lenient enough. So again, it's it's really interesting to see things from both of those two perspectives and um, I'm just really interested to see how this um, book is going to continue to progress because again as I said before I really don't see Ryle changing. Okay so we're on page 112 and this line really stuck out to me and Lily is saying how do people leave these cycles when they don't have the resources I had or the support from their fr friends and family? How do they possibly stay strong enough every second of the day? I feel like all it takes is one weak insecure moment in the presence of your ex to convince yourself you made the wrong decision. And I find that really interesting because I feel like when people are in abusive relationships or I feel like when people um, have experienced domestic violence or abuse, people are always so quick to blame the victim for not leaving. But Lily does bring up a good point because I feel like in Lily's situation it was far easier for her to leave. I'm not saying that it was easy but it was still a difficult decision but I found that she was able to be more rational and make that decision to leave Ryle sooner because she had that support group with her and she had people that could help her and she also had resources too because again I feel like even in the western world if you are somebody that is you know able to have access to things like a therapist or you're able to have things like social programs to help you like even if you are in an abusive or toxic relationship you can leave and you know that there are you know systems put in place and there are people that can support you and help you but i feel like in other parts of the world where people don't have access to these things they're less likely to leave these relationships and they're more likely to continue that cycle of abuse just because they don't know where else to go because i also feel like if lily was very financially dependent on ryle and i also feel like <clears throat> If she didn't have her mom beside her or she didn't even have Atlas or she also didn't have Alyssa as well, I feel like she wouldn't have left Ryle and I honestly feel like she would have stayed in the relationship because even when she was about to fall through with the divorce, she still kind of sat there and questioned her decision. She still sat there and questioned what she was doing and she was like, is this right? Am I making a mistake? And once again, I feel like because she had that support from the people that were in her life, it made it easier. And I also feel like it's really helpful that she continues to have that support because even though she consistently has to interact with Ryle, you can see that he makes it very difficult because he is a very manipulative person. So I don't know, that's something that just really stuck out to me and something that um, I kind of just wanted to share. So back to reading. Okay, it's 10.06 right now and I am currently going downstairs for my family Bible study and I'm currently on chapter 18, just about to start it, so page 130, no 163, page 162. <laughs> and i honestly feel like i'm being slow with reading like I, I honestly felt like i would finish this already but again i feel like i'm reading so slow i don't know if i'm reading fast enough because technically i started reading 
at like 4, I think it was like 4.41, 4.47. I guess if you really wanted to round it off, we'll just say 5 o'clock, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's taken me 6 hours and I'm still not done this book. So, um, we're definitely gonna power through, but it's, it, I don't want to say it's intense, but there's definitely a lot more going on in this novel than I kind of anticipated for. The fact that Atlas has a whole nother sibling that we have to deal with on top of Louie and Ryle, I feel like it's definitely, you know, adding some extra turmoil but um it's an interesting read so yeah we're currently on chapter 27 page 243 and this is going to be the first time we're going to see atlas and ryle interact and obviously i have a very strong feeling that this is going to end in a very negative way and just based off of like reading and the way that ryle is behaving for the life of me, I just don't understand why he continues to behave in this manner. It's so immature and obviously he's not getting what he wants when he's behaving in this way. So I just don't understand why. Well, obviously it's a lot easier said than done. But for the life of me, I just can't conceptualize and understand why he's not changing his behavior. Just because if you're, if you're doing something for an extended period of time and it's not getting you the results that you want to get, don't you think changing the way that you're behaving would maybe solve that problem? And on top of that, like if by any means he's trying to quote unquote win Lily back or he wants things to get better or he wants to form a better relationship with her, going about it in this manner isn't going to do that. And to be honest, in these next couple of pages and just in the rest of this novel, because I think we probably have maybe like a couple more chapters left. Right now it is... 4.07 in the morning and I just finished reading it starts with us a cute ending I love the way that it ended I um I mean I like I expected and anticipated that Lily and Atlas were going to get married in the end but I think one thing that really caught me off guard but like in a good way in the novel was the fact that Atlas had a younger brother I was not expecting that to be introduced in this novel and I feel like it was really nice seeing how the book wasn't just mainly focused on Lily and Alice's relationship, but I also love the aspect of him finally realizing that he had a brother and trying to fix the relationship that he had with his mom and trying to just be there to support his little brother to ensure that his little brother didn't go through the same struggles that he went through or even to the level that Atlas had went through because obviously like throughout um it starts with us and even like not that it starts with us but obviously throughout it ends with us we um not necessarily get a glimpse but we you know learn about how atlas was homeless but obviously in this novel it kind of goes a little more in depth of like the severity and how bad it was but um i really enjoyed reading that i also really liked how closer to the end of the novel lily had actually suggested that ryle go um take like anger management classes which i feel like I was very happy to see, very happy to hear because there was no mention of like any like mental health resources or just um, Ryle getting any sort of help in the first novel so the fact that it was mentioned in this one was really nice. For me, in my opinion, I feel like after we hit chapter 20 or at least for me personally after I hit chapter 20, I feel like everything else that took place in the novel was kind of predictable. Like it was obviously evident that like Lily and Atlas were eventually going to move together, he was going to propose, they are going to get married in the end. And I honestly really did think that Atlas was, not Atlas, I honestly really did think that Ryle was going to lose custody of Emerson and he wouldn't be able to see her and I actually thought he would be like detained and booked behind bars but surprisingly he wasn't but it was also nice to see how Ryle had like the smallest change of heart and I feel like he only complied with what Lily was saying because obviously he knew that there was no other way that he could work around it just because even the people that were closest to him kind of sat him down and like hey what you're doing isn't right it's not okay and we do love you but we're not obviously going to support your toxic behavior and the fact that you're treating your wife in this way so i really appreciate seeing people that were in his life sitting him down and telling him that like the way that he was behaving wasn't acceptable so i really appreciated that but apart from that this wasn't a bad book in my opinion i would probably say that I like it starts with us more than I like it ends with us and I feel like it was a really nice way to like wrap up Lily and Ryle's story so yeah 